scheduled council hearings and matters, and this one's from the police department. Extending ordinance number 201141 relating to placing a moratorium on outdoor cultivation of medical marijuana in the city of Fresno. Chief Dyer. <laughs> council President, uh, members of the council, the item that you have before you uh, is to authorize the extension of the emergency ordinance that prohibits uh, the outdoor cultivation of uh, marijuana in the city of Fresno. Uh, you authorized on uh, December 15th the initial emergency ordinance uh, which provided for the moratorium that would prohibit the outdoor grow and uh, the that uh, that moratorium was good for 45 days and we are here before you today to ask for uh, an extension and uh, if not, then that moratorium would expire uh, January 29th. We anticipate bringing uh, an amendment to you in late April after we appear before the uh, Planning Commission, and that would uh, be for the purpose of having a permanent ban on the cultivation of outdoor marijuana in the city of Fresno. And I wanted to add that the, uh, the lack of regulation uh, has really allowed for the uh, proliferation of outdoor marijuana grows in the city of Fresno. Uh, as you were presented with a overview on December 15th, you know or you're aware that there are several outdoor grows within the city of Fresno. Many of those outdoor grows are in neighborhoods uh, adjacent to schools. Uh, we have received a significant number of complaints from citizens, school officials, and uh, as a result of some of these outdoor grows, we've also seen uh, attempted thefts from those grows and in one case resulting in a murder. But there's uh, certainly the people that are protecting those grows ha have armed themselves with, uh, with firearms and certainly anyone that uh, attempts to steal uh, from those marijuana grows, there's a potential for violence not only amongst them but uh, unfortunately maybe neighbors uh, being involved in that uh, gunfire as well. Uh, Lieutenant Newton is here uh, for, the, for the purpose of providing a presentation to you, the PowerPoint presentation, if you need that. Uh, but it's really somewhat of a recap. It talks about the, um, the financial profits and the violence associated with these grows, the complaints that we've received, and uh, as well as you know, what the ordinance is about. So if you choose to have that, we have it available. If not, and I understand it's been a long day, then we can uh, certainly skip that and leave you with the item. I think that uh, I think it might be appropriate. Uh, we, we had a, a good presentation last time about a month ago, and I think it probably in light of, of our situation on time, it would be appropriate that uh, either you could, if, if you were so inclined to, to hit the, the high points, bullet points, or to just, we can probably have a discussion, just vote on it. Leave, leave it up to you. We don't, we don't need to make right. the presentation. Your time is valuable. Okay. All right. Well, then, um, if, if you're finished, then, Chief, we can hear from the public. Well, and um, Council President, yes. if there was anything, I, I know there was some question as to since we had the hearing last time, the U.S. Attorney has come out with a, a new position on that. So if we could just maybe verbally address that, then I think that would be sufficient for me. Yeah, I can uh, touch on a little bit. W one of the reasons that we had not brought this item before Council before, there was really two things that were occurring. Number one was that the uh, U.S. Attorney uh, had initially come out with an, an opinion that they were not going to be involved in the enforcement uh, in California of the medical marijuana uh, issue. And, uh, but since that time, they have changed their opinion and they are actively and aggressively involved in pursuing these types of cases. Uh, second to that is there's been a couple of uh, case laws at the appellate courts and um, w which allows for local jurisdictions to ban med medical marijuana dispensaries and in fact one of those cases uh, in Long Beach went even further and uh, ruled that uh, only the federal government could regulate uh, marijuana. So. We waited for some of those things to be flushed out before we came before the council, uh, but we believe today we are in very good standing in uh, pursuing this and that local government has the complete authority to regulate these outdoor marijuana grows. Okay, thank you very much, Chief. And at this time, we'll take it out to the public. I have one card from Rosalind Clark. And please give us your name and address. 
even though we all know. Good afternoon. I had to change that from good morning to good afternoon. <laughs> Anyhow, <clears throat> Council President Olivier and Council Members, City Manager Scott and uh, City Attorney Sanchez. And also, welcome to our new City Clerk, Ms. Spence. Welcome to our community, a community of diversity and volunteerism, and in some areas, most areas, unite, unity. So Fresno will grow on you. Um, anyhow, uh, I, I, most of you, I, I hope, have received my letter, or hopefully all of you have received my letter. And uh, there really isn't much to add except to say that we do view the outdoor cultivation of marijuana as a potential for crime in our neighborhoods. And this is evident in the police reports of five shootings and one death in the city of Fresno related to the outdoor gardens. And as in crime situations that I have found across the city, many times others go unreported. Um, as the and the, so it presents a quality of life issue and a safety issue for the citizens of Fresno. And as the leader of approximately 1,200 neighborhood watch groups across the city of Fresno, comprising approximately 20,000 residents, um, I respectfully request your, yes vote, your yes vote in extending the existing moratorium on outdoor cultivation of mar medical marijuana in the city of Fresno. Uh, until further uh, permanent ones can be established. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council on this issue? Okay, seeing none, we'll bring it back to the dais right now. Yes, thank you very much, Council President. Um, Chief, just real quickly, um, I'll be as quick as possible. So uh, what's the, the, the reason and kind of the justification for the, we, we came in and we did 45 days, and now we're doing, um, well, the rest of the year, uh, essentially. So what was the, the thinking on that, Chief? Uh, in essence, uh, there wasn't an ability to get it done in the 45 days, and we knew that, but that was what we had to request at the time. And it's my understanding as a result, the, the government code states that if you come back for an extension, that that extension is good for 10 months and 15 days, although we will not need that entire time. But as my understanding, that is what the uh, the code allows for. Uh, we knew initially that we weren't going to be able to complete it in the 45-day period, but we had to we had to go through that process in order to get to the extension. So the government code requires a 45-day initial followed by a second. Emergency ordinances like these, uh, where you have the emergency background, you have to go through the initial limited period and then if you make sufficient findings following that where the emergency still exists, then the additional time can be granted by the body. Okay. So that, that's a function of California state law that requires it to be done that way. Okay. And, and um, Chief, the other question is, and, and I know we still stand on the same comments that we had when we instituted the 45 days, at least I'll make that assertion for, for myself and my comments um, at, at that time. And as far as I'm concerned, the emergency still exists and would continue to exist. Uh, it's not a potential for crime. I think it's an actuality that we know it has um, a direct correlation to crime. And I know not too long ago on the, the news, I watched a uh, home invasion robbery that we, we think was motivated by trying to find uh, marijuana in the home. And that's not been the only one. That's been one of numerous ones. So, Chief, the, the other issue, and I don't know this um, exactly what all the issues are that are going before the California State Supreme Court. But I think we ought to consider, assuming that the issues are what I think the issues are going to be, um, perhaps we ought to, ought to look at either joining or adding an amicus brief uh, on our own uh, from the city of Fresno as the fifth largest city in California. Because um, I'm, I'm, I'm really afraid what the, the, the nine justices of the California State Supreme Court may or may not do um, and if they come down with some of the interesting, um, I'm going to say it generously, interesting rulings um, that they have o over the years, um, you know, we may find ourselves right back into the same position we are right now. So uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts on uh, us perhaps joining or filing our own amicus brief. Um, and I'll run that to you, Chief, first, and then you, as City Attorney. 
Well, any time, you know, I know there's a cost associated with that. And when I was the president of the Cal Chiefs, we did a number of amicus briefs uh, to to pursue these types of, of issues with other cities across California, and many of those have paid big dividends. So if, if that's a direction of the council or a decision of the council, I think it would be a, a very good one. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know, maybe Cal Chiefs is doing something or some other city that we can officially join, but City Attorney, did you kind of want to comment yeah, on that? There, there are multiple cases that are moving forward, but all of them do involve the police powers of the city. Some deal with dispensaries. Um, fundamentally, I think we would gain benefit from favorable decisions there because we have an existing uh, zoning code requirement for dispensaries that they have to comply with federal and state law. We believe that's legal, and anything that would impede that, we, we would want to advocate uh, against. Um, and then certainly in terms of the cultivation, as of right now, those cases don't appear to present a threat to our police powers with regards to the prohibition of outdoor cultivation. Um, but uh, again, we, we would want to watch those. But certainly, we could uh, put together with the police department a uh, an amicus letter, letter of support, if that's the council's wishes. Well, I think probably we ought to take a look at what the potential outcomes are of those issues and see. But um, yeah, I I don't want to do anything that jeopardizes our police authority and our ability to regulate businesses and. Uh, dispensaries in particular, and so I think uh, it would probably be well-founded to add our voice um, in opposition to, because there's certainly a concerted effort on the other side to open it all up, and as badly done as Proposition 98, was it 98, that was done? Compassionate use? Yeah. My proposition, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. 215. 215? Is that the Compassionate Use Act? Yeah, the Compassionate Use Act. Whatever the proposition was, as badly, as poorly worded in what got passed, uh, leaves big, big holes for courts to drive through. So anyway, with that said, I go ahead and make a motion to approve the, uh, uh, the item. Okay, we have a motion by Member Westerland and a second by Member Zhang. Member Borges. I seconded it before you. <laughs> uh, just a quick question, Chief. Uh, uh, thanks for thanks for being here. Um, uh, Member Westerland asked the question about uh, how we extend emergency uh, ordinances and how that plays out. And I think we chatted about this a little bit before. Can you describe what legislation the county has on this issue? If you could, if you can recall, I I believe this is going to make us consistent, Dave, with the county. Um, they too have had a, a moratorium that prohibits the outdoor grove of uh, marijuana. And so this would make us consistent on a countywide basis, which is obviously important in, from an enforcement standpoint, and also important in the fact that uh, with their moratorium, that tends to force people into the city. Uh, as you know, when we first, uh, we were way ahead of the curve when we uh, passed a, uh, an ordinance here that, that required that uh, that anyone that would operate uh, any type of a medical marijuana facility had to be consistent with state and federal law. As a result of that, that forced much of the activity into the county. And so this would allow us to be consistent so we don't force those back and forth. And that's, and that's exactly uh, what I'm concerned about. Uh, I know that once this emergency ordinance ends and we have the full effect of uh, the original piece of legislation, you said you're looking, what, about March, April? Well, probably late April. I think we're appearing before the Planning Commission the first week of April, and then we'll be uh, before you shortly thereafter. All right. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, I don't know if it would be appropriate at this point, but um, I know that we have uh, uh, the encouragement and the philosophical agreement with uh, the Chief and the Police Department. Can we just make certain that whatever final form that's in, that it is completely consistent with that that the county has? Um, because I think Chief is exactly right. The last thing we want is to encourage uh, uh, folks to go into county islands or to go in the city or to go to the rural areas because the laws are different. So, As we continue working with the department on the development of the, of the final ordinance brought back to council, we, we will pay attention to that. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Good. Thank you. Member Brand. I have a 
just a few questions. I had a couple people in the last time had contacted me uh, regarding you know the the outdoor cultivation. Is the state is the state law six plants per person? That's what it's supposed to be. Well, <laughs> I know it goes up to it, initially. Yeah. And uh, the the courts ruled that there was, it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, but the courts have really um, shied away from that now in terms of what you can and can't have. And, uh, and there are certain jurisdictions uh, up around Santa Cruz where, uh, granted, I think that you could have uh, uh, two pounds of marijuana. And so the courts have really shied away from saying what you can and cannot have. At least that's the last I had seen. Okay, so there's no uh, standard... Anywhere in California? No, no. no there, there, initially, there was there was a standard of six plants and uh, mature plants and, and a certain amount of uh, other marijuana you could possess, but that's been thrown out by the courts. Yeah, and it was lost in the whole thing. Is really there are legitimate people out there that have you know uh, medical needs. And this thing has became so convoluted and and you know with the uh, the way it turned out that you know, people that probably would benefit. Because I, I was told that if you grow it indoors, you got to pay electricity. If you have it outdoors, of course, it's cheaper to do it. And is there any way that if we could have a deal that say somebody was allowed six plants as long as it wasn't over the fence? Is that or just too hard to enforce? I, I think that would be ill-advised. I, I know there's uh, there was discussion about that once before. Mm -hmm. I believe if we're going to have a prohibition, it mm -hmm. needs to be a complete prohibition. If a, if a person chooses to grow marijuana inside a plant or two, um, we're not going to be able to regulate that as long as they have a um, have been determined by a doctor to have a medicinal need. Mm -hmm. But I would, whether it's uh, one plant or ten plants or 99 plants, the potential for somebody to jump their fence and steal it and have a violent confrontation is high. Well, realistically, it's, I mean, so the only safe way is really to keep it indoors and that and that's what we're seeing even that's not safe because many of the home invasion robberies that we're having today they're targeting those individuals that have indoor marijuana grows and uh, we've had some violent confrontations there too so but at least this uh, takes away the the attractive nuisance uh, outdoor uh, when you have these marijuana grows on the outside, what we have found is they emit a, a very strong sense of, of a, the skunk smell, and it is allowing for people to um, that are involved in criminal activity to know where those marijuana grows are. Whereas if it's indoor, uh, it's difficult to do that. They'd have to have inside information in order to to know that. But really, the, the really the only solution would be at the state level that they'd ever try to get legislation that uh, actually provides reasonable standards and, and guidelines and so on. So in the interim, we've got what we have to do. And city attorney, that is within our rights to, you know, there's nobody challenging this on these indoor prohibitions. At this point, we, we are not in a position where we would look at the indoor prohibition simply because we are concerned about the fact that there is the I'm ability. I'm sorry, the outdoor prohibition. I'm sorry. We, yeah. We're comfortable, yeah. absolutely comfortable okay. with the outdoor grow. Right. Our concern was eliminating it entirely would create some problems from a constitutional civil rights standpoint, but the outdoor groves allows them a reasonable alternative right. for those who, who meet the criteria okay. for uh, medicinal use. And, and so by allowing it indoors, we're still in compliance with state law. Yes. Okay, and I agree with me Member West, uh, I'm sorry, Borges, excuse me, that we should be consistent with uh, Fresno County to make it a lot easier for both the, the police department and the uh, sheriff's department to uh, have consistent standards. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Member Westerland. Yeah, I'm sorry to speak on it a second time, but I, I, Council Member Brand brought up a, a, a subject, and I know um, uh, on the indoor outdoor side of it, you know, part of the problem with it, the ban that we're doing outdoors, we're forcing it inside. Inside, there may be children, you know, we, we get a lot of that kind of exposure. Um, probably the most uh, most conservative um, ordinance that's been passed in California, to my knowledge, is Anderson, California, uh, actually up north. And Anderson, California, is that part of their ordinance required that they had to have a separate house, a separate 
structure um, outside of the home, not the, in the inside of the residential home, that all of the grows had to be done there. They all had to have um, windows that were, uh, they had bars on the windows, they had a um, uh, smell um, ventilation, ventilation systems with scrubbers for the, the smell. They had an alarm system uh, that had to be coded for the higher electrical um, load on the stuff, and they required it all to be in a separate structure, a separate shed um, that met all of the code requirements to be done. And I, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm thinking, um, that we'll get it back a permanent ordinance, something like that, uh, at the end of this, that says if you're going to grow, it's expensive, but you're going to have to set up your own shed outside of your house um, with, you know, scrubbers that clean the air. Um, it's alarmed. You can't see it. I mean, it's it's an expensive proposition, but that's probably the only way to get it uh, out of the house and exposure to children. Um, so anyway, Anderson, California is. is is a, is a good example, at least in my opinion. So thanks. Okay. Take a look at that. Thank you, Member Westerland. The screen is now clear. I just wanted to kind of explain the, the direction that I'm going to move in. Um, Voting yes, right? Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, Clint. <laughs> There's no pressure. Um, I, I just wanted to, to share my sentiment, and I know that, that especially Roz and the Chief and your staff, um, I, I feel you deserve an explanation from me on why I feel the way I do. Um, I agree with my colleagues and, and especially uh, Councilmember Brand who um, feel that it's very regrettable the way that, that this has turned out, uh, the marijuana issue here in, in the state and in our nation. Uh, I think there's a lot of heartache around it. Um, I agree that there's uh, the attractive nuisance element, the stink. I remember, um, as I said last time this issue came up, I was at a, at a block party uh, sponsored by, um, what's the group? bringing broken neighborhoods back to life and um, 40 feet away there were the marijuana grow uh, from where the kids were in the bounce house and I you know really my heart breaks that this that this happens in our neighborhoods and I want to give you all the tools possible uh, that you can use to clean up the neighborhoods um, that being said 30 days ago um, I voted against it on the grounds that it I was uncomfortable with the the nature of it being such an urgent emergency uh, measure um, I at that time spoke um, in favor of, of waiting until something more firm would come forward. Um, and so my vote today will be no. And um, it doesn't reflect on you or your department or the folks at Neighborhood Watch or people who uh, live in crime-infested neighborhoods who are demanding service uh, or, or folks who, who speak out against crime, activists in our community. Um, I have a feeling it's going to pass. Um, but I just wanted to, to make this vote based on, on, on the way I feel about emergency um, legislation I, and ordinances. So I appreciate that, Council I, President, and, and respect your position. I always do. Well, and thank you very much, uh, again, for, for what you do and, and to your staff. And um, I'm going to be relying on you for some stuff in the future, I'm sure. So I, I enjoy working with you. So um, that being said, the screen is clear. Uh, why don't we get this over with? <laughs> and um, we have a motion. Do we have a motion? And a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? One. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, there's